Let's look at a particular case here of work being done by a varying force. Most of the examples we've been studying deal with a constant force, except for the elastic force, such as with the spring. Here, the force varies linearly with displacement. We can look at work as the accumulation of the force applied over each finite displacement if the force is changing. That's equivalent to finding the area under the curve on a graph of the force as a function of position. And for a spring, that is given by this expression here, 1 half kxf squared minus 1 half kxi squared, where this is the final and the initial position relative to a zero equilibrium pos position. Let's look at an example. Here we have an example of work being done by a varying force, specifically a spring. So a spring is 17.0 centimeters long when it's lying on a table. One end is then attached to a hook and the other end is pulled by a force that increases to 25 newtons, causing the spring to stretch a length of 19.2 centimeters. What is the force constant of the spring? B, how much force was required to stretch the spring from 17 centimeters to 19.2 centimeters? And C, how long will the spring be if the 25 newton force is replaced by a 50 newton force? So we're told that the spring is originally 7.0 centimeters long. So that's its equilibrium position. And it's then stretched to a length of 19.2 centimeters. This corresponds to a delta x of 2.2 centimeters. So relative to an equilibrium position, we would call this 0 and this 2.2 centimeters. So it took a force of 25 newtons to extend it to a position of 2.2 centimeters. And k, our spring constant, is the slope of this curve, or this line. So for part a, when we're asked to find the force constant, we just want to find that k. That means we're finding the slope where we went 25 newtons for a position of 0 0.22 meters. And therefore, I have a spring constant of 1.14 times 10 to the 3 newtons per meter. Part b asks us for how much work was required to stretch the spring from 17 centimeters to 19 centimeters. My work for an elastic force is given by that 1 half k x f squared minus 1 half k x i squared. And then I'll simply plug in my values. I've got an initial zero position and a final position of 0 0.022 meters. And that gives me then a work of 0 0.275 joules. Part C says how long will the spring be if the 25 newton force is replaced by a 50 newton force? So remember, for a spring, f equals kx, I'm then asked to find x, which just means I'm taking my force, dividing by my spring constant. And so this is 50 newtons now, instead of 25 newtons, and my spring constant is a 1.14 times 10 to the 3 newtons per meter. And so now, I've doubled the force, and I get double the displacement. But I want to take that one step further. So you notice I doubled the force and therefore I got double the displacement. So taking it from 25 newtons to 50 newtons took the position from 2.2 centimeters up to 4.4 centimeters. What about the work done in that last case? What would the work be for that second position? So you'll notice in this last part that I added when I doubled the, the force to 50 newtons, I doubled the displacement, but I more than doubled the work that's being done. So remember, work is the area under the curve. So here was the area, or the work, to take it to 2.2 centimeters, but this is the work that I needed to take it to 4.4 centimeters. It ends up being four times the amount of work because the work being done in this second section is three times the amount as the original, and so I end up with a total that's four times the amount of what it took to get it to 2.2 centimeters. So if the area here was A, the area here is a 3A, all for a total of four times the area, or four times the amount of work. 
And so this is the feature of a work done by a linearly varying force. As we stretch the spring, we need to apply a greater and greater force, and that means we're doing more and more work. So it gets harder and harder to do, which aligns with probably your own experience.